welcome to Fire Emblem Per D. I'm tired. <laughs> like, really tired. Um, I just got done. Do I have a memory card in? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I just got done playing Bloodborne. And I lost. And I lost. And I lost. And I lost. <laughs> For two hours straight. Ah, uh, it was awful. Um. <laughs> and so, like, my. Like, the boss wasn't even that hard. It made me so upset because. Well, I guess. I don't know if there's subtitles or not, so I probably shouldn't talk in case there's dialogue, because there will eventually be dialogue during this cutscene, well, I think. I, you had enough? Okay, there wasn't any subtitles. Ah, but the dubbing isn't super good anyways. I mean, it's decent, but... Uh, I'll just talk over top of it. Um, see, my big problem was I took a week break from Bloodborne. <laughs> and it's a very, very, like, reflex-based game. Very stressful and like whatnot, and <laughs> so you really can't take a break from something like that and then expect to be just as good as you were before. And so when I came back, I just sucked a lot. And then my uh, by the time I got good enough to beat the boss and like memorize his pattern stuff like that, my fingers were just dead. Like they were in pain and it was just awful. So. <laughs> I need a game that doesn't revolve around, like, lightning-fast reflexes. And what's better than that than a strategy game? Enter Fire Emblem, um, which is one of my favorite franchises. And in case you're wondering, yes, I was playing long before Awakening came around. It's actually probably the only reason why I have this game, because after Awakening came out, this game just, like, skyrocketed in price. Like, before, no one cared about Fire Emblem. Like, Fire Emblem, strategy games, pff, no one cares. And then Awakening comes out, and everyone's like, oh, This game has shipping! I love Fire Emblem! I need to get all the older games! And now the older games are worth, like, a crud ton of money. So, you are very lucky to be watching me play this. Or to really see anyone play this. I mean, it's not that it's super, super rare, but... It's rare enough and valuable enough that people like it. Um, so, yeah, I did do difficult because I feel like challenging myself. I've never beaten this game on difficult, but that's because I've never tried to beat it on difficult. I'm also not going to reset every single chapter when someone dies, which is what you'd normally do because you don't want to lose your characters. This is one of those permadeath games where if a character dies, it's dead for good, with a couple exceptions. Uh, sometimes they'll just go back and like be your advisor or something like that. Um, but for the most part, they're permadead. Uh, it'll also save a lot of time because sometimes you would go through an entire level, it would take like 15 to 30 minutes, and then you get to the end and then some bullshit critical hit happens, and then you have to reset everything because your favorite character just died. Something like that. So, it might hurt me a little bit, but... Uh, I'm gonna let people die, basically. I'm not gonna redo a level. Uh, the exception being when your Lord character dies, the you lose automatically, so you have to reset. So in this case, uh, there isn't a Lord character. Ike is technically the Lord character, and uh, he's a ranger. Um, he does get to class change into... I think it is still called Lord, or maybe it's something else. I don't know. He class changes into something Lord-like later on, so it still kind of makes sense. But, um, anyways, this is just like the intro. That's why I'm kind of talking over top of it. If you're super curious about it, you can rewind and read the text. But more or less, it's Boyd just being like, Hey, yo, Ike, we're kind of like rivals and buddies and whatnot, and uh, I'm going to be your tutorial buddy. So... Uh, you're gonna move and try and attack me and whatnot. So, that's what I'm gonna do. So, the stats. Uh, HP is, their HP obviously. MT, I believe, stands for like, mount, which would be like a mount hit or something like that. I don't know. Basically, MT just means how much damage they can do. 
um, hit is a percentage thing. In this case, it's 100% for both of them. Uh, crit is a, another percentage thing. Right now, it's a 0% for both of them. Uh, I just wanted to explain that in case people are new to Fire Emblem and they didn't know how to read those strategy type screens. Anyways, so from here you can see that I'm going to deal 9 damage to Boyd. Boyd's going to deal 8 back. And then during her, his turn, he's going to deal another 8 to me. So I'll be down to 3. And then I'll deal another 9 to him. And then he'll be defeated because 9 and 9 is 18. Pretty simple. It's a tutorial. They're not going to let you lose at a tutorial. Uh, hence the 100% hit rate and the very, very nice fitting numbers. So, yeah, I was just going to play out like I already said. Maybe I should have said all this while I let the little scene play out. Oops. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Fuck you, Boyd. <sighs> All right. Well, I got that out of the way. Do I fight my dad now or later? I think Mist runs out with like a vulnerary and they teach you how to heal and you get to fight your dad. Or I might be remembering wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he just runs off. <laughs> oh, okay. He just off to the side. <laughs> I thought he was just gonna run away. He just be like, oh, I got told. I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, so I was right. I do get to face dead. But I'd get my arse handed to me if I didn't heal first. I still think I lose. I don't think there is a way to beat your dad. I think this is supposed to be part of the tutorial that you do lose. Because, uh... You don't know this now, but... Hold on. What's his range? And does he move? I forget whether or not he moves. But in case he moves, I should probably get out of his range. Alright, there we go. Ooh, I'm gonna have to use two bars. Okay. Can I reach him? No. Uh, I don't think it matters if I waste the vulnerary or not. I don't think it carries on to the next battle. Or if it does, I don't know for sure if uh, I get a new one or not. But I'm going to waste it anyways, just going to see, can I beat him? I think I can, actually. Yes, I can beat him. But only if I healed fully like I did there. And then neither of them have a crit, neither of them have a times two attack. Well, maybe I can't beat him. Hold on. Yes, I can. Alright. Because then it'll be his turn. He'll drop me relatively low. And then my next turn, because I have a 100% hit rate, I won't miss. Which means I'll be able to hit him safely and not die. So, cool. You can beat Grail. I don't think I did before, mostly because I probably didn't waste a turn and get out of range and do the vulnerary thing. Oh, yeah, let's just move over here just for fun. <laughs> Backstab! <laughs> Except for it didn't work. Because he turns around, because Fire Emblem animations, they do that. <sighs> Nito. Give me some XP. Give me that sweet XP. Aw, oh, yeah. Leveled up already. Okay. That was a relatively bad level up. Oh, it didn't even stay long enough for me to talk about it. I was going to talk about all the stats, and... Anyways, I can at least talk about this. Uh, the level ups are randomly generated. Uh, so each time, they'll be different. So, in this case, I only got three stats raised, instead of, like, all the stats being raised, which is the best. Uh, obviously, it can go even worse, where only one stat raises... I don't think it's possible to have zero stats raising. I think there's always a possibility of at least one. But, now I probably should skip through it. Because you guys will probably want to read it and not care so much about the strategy. Because this has a really good story. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, this, if I wasn't doing a Let's Play, I would totally be focusing on the story right now. But because I want to explain stuff to you guys, I'm kind of skipping through it a little bit. Just a little bit. For the most part, it's just setting up that 
Ike and Grail are uh, father and son. Well, Mist is also Grail's daughter. And they're mercenaries. Boyd is part of their mercenaries. Boyd is also kind of like the childhood friend of Ike. Unfortunately, outside of support dialogue, Boyd doesn't really play a huge part in the story. So it's not going to be like one of those Codius things where like, Lelouch the brown haired guy. It's not going to be one of those like kind of rivalry type friend relationship things. Boyd's just going to be like a very supportive character. Um, or rather unit, should you use him and should I not kill him on accident. So, in other words, Boyd is a character, but he's not like a super, super important character. The people you want to focus on is Grail, Ike, to a degree Mist, Titania is more this guardian type character. Uh, you actually... Normally, my strategy uh, would be to use Titania as little as possible because she doesn't need the EXP. She's already class changed. Uh, if you play Pokemon, it's basically the same thing as Evolution, where they have a different form, um, but they're similar enough to their previous class. So usually they get access to using an extra weapon uh, with some increased stats and possibly adding um, in some games like a, a mount or something like that. By mount I mean like a horse or not not a mount as in a mount or rather yes a mount is in a mount not a mount is in a mount. Sorry. Bleh. Um, yeah he's just talking about mercenary stuff doesn't matter. Um, so Titania, uh, normally you want to avoid using her because she saps EXP away from other people. And you might think, oh, well, why don't you just use your big strong unit like Titania, considering that she's already class changed, and like you, she, can, she can just sweep everything for you, and that's all you need, right? No, because then your units that you need to get leveled up the weak ones early game, then they don't get the EXP. And Titania doesn't need the XP, because once she's maxed out, she's going to max out a lot sooner than these guys. And when she maxes out, it's almost guaranteed she's not going to max out with higher stats than the other guys. Unless she has really, really good RNG with leveling up, and like all your other mounted units have like terrible RNG. But odds are, Titania, at the end of the game, is going to be far weaker than all your other characters from the beginning of the game, should you have leveled them up. So... Unfortunately, I'm playing uh, difficult mode or hard mode or whatever it was called, and so I will have to use her occasionally to help out in a pinch. I'm going to try not to use her, but I'm probably going to have to. Yo, viewer, it's Fire Emblem, as if you couldn't have told from the beginning of the video. <laughs> Regardless, you're here at the end card, the end of the video. So, I'm going to request you give me feedback. Do you like Fire Emblem? Do you want to see more of Fire Emblem? I'll probably play all the way through this game, but I might also play other Fire Emblem games. So, uh, if you don't like Fire Emblem, speak up now. Or forever. Hold your silence. Or whatever the saying is, I don't know.